Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to speak to you about the latest breakthroughs in cardiovascular imaging. Even though I think there's not a single breakthrough to talk about, it's more of an evolution, and I would like to highlight a few important aspects. But the first aspect of us is, of course, the continuous evolution of technology in imaging, where we can see, for example, the echocardiography has been for years developing tremendously as far as image quality is concerned. And you can see the image on the left showing what echocardiography looks like in the year 2021. And then there's completely new developments like cardiac CT, which was non-existent 20 years ago and now provides extremely high image quality. So technology is relentlessly and continuously progressing. It's an evolution, not a revolution. What is also happening is that increasingly in imaging, we are using software, which is programmed to see more that we can visually detect as investigators. And one prime example of this is strain imaging, strain and strainer imaging, where we can quantify the deformation of the myocardium using computer methods. And this provides substantial additional information. As an example, where software sees more than meets the investigator's eye. Here you can see a normal case of global longitudinal strain, which is typically in the range of minus 20%, here minus 19.7%, and this is completely normal. While in other cases where the left ventricular ejection fraction might seem relatively normal, global longitudinal strain can be significantly reduced, as you can see here an example where the strain is only 12. And this is more sensitive to early changes and early damage in the myocardium than the ejection fraction. And this has been sh shown numerous times. And let me just highlight a few examples. Here's a meta-analysis of trials looking at patients who undergo chemotherapy for cancer. And in almost 2,000 patients, it was clearly shown that if the reduced strain is found in spite of a normal ejection fraction, the risk to develop heart failure during the further course of treatment is increased by a factor 12 to 16. So strain seeing more than meets the eye and can predict heart failure. Or in patients with clinical heart failure, the fact it has been shown again in a large trial that the ejection fraction does not correlate with mortality very well. While in patients with reduced longitudinal strain, that's the graph on the right, you can see a significantly increased probability of death as global longitudinal strain goes down. Strain is more closely correlated to death than ejection fraction in patients with heart failure. So a sensitive measure of myocardial damage. And this also has clinical applications. If you just think about the important area of asymptomatic patients with valvular regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, patient is asymptomatic, ejection fraction is normal, and there's good data that reduced strain indicates patients who have a higher risk of mortality. And in the patients with reduced strain, this trial from the Mayo Clinic has shown that surgery is beneficial. While in patients who have normal strain, there's no benefit from surgery because they have a pretty good prognosis even without surgery. So again, seeing more than meets the eye, strain detects early ventricular damage, and this is rapidly infiltrating echocardiography practice and has become a very, very useful tool. For example, in the context of ejection fraction uh, of heart failure, in the context of chemotherapy, in the context of valvular disease. A really, really important movement in imaging and in medicine in general, in general, however, is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is penetrating the area of imaging rapidly because there's so much data that needs to be evaluated. In echocardiography, we also see this, that without human interaction, artificial intelligence can be trained to detect disease can directly detect disease. And here you can see a publication from two years ago, how hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, amyloidosis, pulmonary hypertension can be detected out of the echocardiography data sets by artificial intelligence with pretty good accuracy area under the receiving operator curves of almost 0.95 for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So this will certainly be a movement that is unstoppable that artificial intelligence can do what normally the investigator, the cardiologist does. But it doesn't stop there. And that's the important point. Artificial intelligence might be able to do more 
then the cardiologist can see. And one prime example for this, not exactly the field of imaging, is this very famous study coming from the Mayo Clinic, where in thousands of EKG traces, artificial intelligence is able to identify in normal EKGs taken in sinus rhythm, those patients who later develop atrial fibrillation. Again, with an accuracy of about 80% something that the human eye cannot see. And that's the true value of artificial intelligence, that it provides additional interpretation, making diagnosis, making predictions that the human eye cannot even see. Similar areas are done in imaging. One study I have listed here in computed tomography, there is data that looking at the fat surrounding the coronary arteries and giving these images to artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence reads parameters, mathematical parameters that the human eye cannot see. And based on these parameters that the human eye cannot see and the changes in the fat surrounding the coronaries, the, the software is able to identify patients who will have acute coronary syndromes in the future. This has been validated. This has been performed in large data sets. So this is really truly amazing that artificial intelligence can see things or identify things that the human eye cannot even see. And this is something that we will encounter in the future in all areas of imaging inside and outside cardiology. In radiology, where artificial intelligence is the biggest topic, because obviously it's all about image interpretation in radiology, they have the saying that artificial intelligence will not replace radiologists, but radiologists who use artificial intelligence will replace those who do not. And probably, if we think a few decades from now, the very same will be true in cardiology. So thinking about breakthroughs in imaging, I don't think it's worth talking about a single breakthrough because we have a constant evolution, constant improvements, constant improvements in imaging, the evolution of technology, the evolution of software that can detect more than meets the investigator's eye, prime example, strain, and then of course the increasing penetration of artificial intelligence in medicine and in imaging. Thank you very much for your attention.